What is going on everyone? Commodore Laz here, bringing to you guys my reaction slash review of Jujutsu Kaisen Manga Chapter 269. Now, oh my god, the chapter has finally come out. We are here today to sit down and read the latest installment of Akutami Gege's Masterpiece. The chapter before the penultimate, before the final chapter of the series, it has finally come out. I don't know why it took so long for it to come out, and honestly... I don't even care why it took as long as it needs to because I have it now, right? I'm reading the TCB version. I know by the time this comes out, the Viz will be out sometime around 11 in the morning. But I always prefer the translation from them versus the one done by John Weary and the Viz. But honestly, if it happens again like this where we're this late and let's say like it isn't out for the next chapter, I may have to go and jump on the Viz for that. But I am hoping this is a one-time occurrence and it's not going to happen again. So, pester those people to make sure we don't go into a situation where I have to read a John Weary JJK chapter in 2024. Please, I beg. But, right now, my focus is on this chapter. Coming back from the break, we gotta know what's going on with Okotsu. Alright? I got my trio back. I got my Yuji. I got my Megumi. I got my Nobara. They're all together. They're happy for the moment. Until we know what's going on with Okotsu, the first son, before we actually got our first son, I need him to be okay. Because if not, we got problems, Gage. We're going to have to fight. At some point in time, I'm pulling up to Rapungi Hills, and we're I, I will cross through those oceans. I will handle you. But for now, let's read this chapter. Let's see what's going on, because we know from where we left off, we have to handle business. What that business is, we don't know. Let's read and find out. So... Here we go. Chapter 269, Jujutsu Kaisen. The title of the chapter is Reflection. And then you see, it looks like a flashback over here. Hold on, because you see there's an older guy on the right side. Looks like he's walking. And you see two kids afterwards going down the left at a small candy store on a street corner. What's your price? What is this thing? Ultra sauce flavor, big wins. Who the hell? Who's made me talking? Who is this? What are you doing at the candy store? Oh god, bro. The, oh, no, I forgot to I remember she has allegations, bro. She has allegations. Oh my god, it's still gone. Yo, you can't be doing that, bro. Yeah, yeah, you can't be doing that, bro. We're on the third to last chapter of the series, and you bring those women to a candy store, bro. And knowing exactly that she's got them allegations on her head top, bro. Why are you bringing this girl to the candy shop? But look at this, bro. You see some kids running right by it? Oh my god, bro. Like. Oh, man, this man always will make me suffer at the very end, no matter what, bro. And the guy has the nerve to call it reflection, bro. There's no reflection, bro. This is called deflection. Maybe may automatic deflection right now. I don't know who this is. This is someone's old boss son or something, probably. Maybe hers. I don't know, man. But that eye is freaking crazy. <laughs> like, it looks like a deformed, like, abra or something. <laughs> like, Utah, you bad. Okay, so so, so go, going straight into it right off the rip, bro. Maki just like clicking a shoot promo on, on my guy. You bastard. Oh, where's my boots? Where's my boots? Where are they? Yo! We're not getting the poor punches yet, though, because we don't. They're much more similar when he puts How he did it though. We're gonna find out, I guess, at some point. But my guy got his body back. Let's go. I didn't get to go sleep us. Don't start thinking everything's all sunshine and rainbows just because you're back in your body. Look at my boy, all nerves. He's like, bro, I just got my joy back. I'm getting lectured, bro. Like, come on, like, let me live. Let me see. <laughs> like, look at that. <laughs> what is he gonna do? What does he do? I can't, I'm gonna miss this cast so much, bro. Like, oh my god. Look at my guy. He's like, he's in the proxy position, just bowing. Like, yo, he's the one that was been suffering, like, most recently, too. Like, come on. I think, um, Maki san. What's up, Megumi? How are you feeling? <laughs> A little foggy. Is this what happens after Unlimited Void? I got off lightly. If that, that's it. So just like, <laughs> the bar and you just watching on the corner. I like to properly apologize to everyone. Oh, well, that can wait. You got nothing to apologize for anyway. <laughs> right now, my focus is on whooping this guy's ass. 
Um, I, I wanted to apologize. Okay, UG. Okay, UG. Okay, my boy, my son. I probably enjoy. This is all because Gozo rejected to kill Itadori from the get go. And that's what uh, Kuzgabi is saying here. And Itadori was just a victim of Kenjaku playing Jujutsu terrorist. I was firmly in the pro execution camp, which we know because from the conversation with Panda and Shibuya. You have Yaga san to thank for me being here, right? But I don't particularly think either side was in the wrong. Everyone had their truth, and those truths led us here. You kids shouldn't feel the least bit guilty. We're all careless brats. Feel free to act like uh, like it. Us grown ups are to blame. Uh, I, I know this is like one of those things where the common sense, like, yeah, they should, but like, I very much appreciate this, like, this honesty that's coming right now from Chris Akabe because. He, like, again, he chose his side. He, you know, he felt what was the right choice to make because of the danger that usually possessed because he had Sukuna at the time. At the end of the day, the, it's almost like you can't, a parent can't blame their child for their sins that they've committed, right? Like, from the outside, you can't blame the son or the daughter or whatever because of what the parents did. That's what you're kind of looking at right now. You can't blame the kids for being put in the situation because it was the fault of the adults that led to that happening, so... It's really nice to see that Kuzakabe is coming full circle on that. So I do appreciate him uh, having that moment right here. How are you able to go back to your body, Okotsu Senpai? Well, thanks to Rika-chan, I thought her not coming with me to Gozo Sensei's body meant that our connection was severed. In reality, after Iori san treated me, Rika-chan was using reverse curse technique to consistently maintain my body. Which, remember, we had saw that pose before during the fight with Sukuna. Still, I was convinced I was a goner once Kenjaku's technique burnt out in the domain. Well, we can consider... I, I Now, my thing is with Mamie being there. What, why, who is the person that you're talking to? We need to get some information about that. We can consider that a slight miscalculation. Kenjaku was living proof that it can operate after, an opening, after opening a domain. He was likely separating the multi, multiple techniques intentionally... He has some kind of method. If I had to guess, I'd say barrier techniques. Obviously, someone who's used the technique for a millennia would be more prepared than someone using a fresh copy. After the technique recovered, I was in a state of suspended animation. But once I reconnected with my external storage of techniques, Rikachan wait, Rikachan, we eventually got here. I'm really sorry to have worried you all. Look at that. <laughs> Yo, man, this is, I'm gonna miss this series so much, bro. Who cares about that? You see the ball, all three of them just like bowing after. If you had taken things more seriously, we would have we would have won a hell of a lot easier. That's the real problem. Yeah, they're like a real nervous, like gold. Like, yeah. first, I should have led the surprise attack on Kenjaku, in which we know Okotsu the beginning is one of the greatest sneaks of all time. So come on. And then there's Higuruma's executioner's sword plan. If we used Toge's remote curse speech, we could have ended things in a flash. Which is very true. And I do like the fact that Maki's bringing this all up. Because they could have made the situation definitely easier. But I also think at the same time that because of the circumstances everything was in, was there a chance that they could have actually made that all work out? That Sukuna and especially Kenjaku wouldn't have put that in mind that they would have tried something like that? You know what I mean? Higuruma should have had the tape recorder on him. Oh, okay. Curse speech cannot be activated more than once. Oh, so this is from, from Minamaki. Curse speech cannot be activated more than once simultaneously until the recording is played. The technique is considered in use. As such, only one tape recorder is allowed. Okay, so we got that right there. See Karada, Akari, and then, of course, with the um, Inu over there in the back. And they all like, but dog, yo, now listen, bro, Toto coming back, I'm sorry, bro, that boogie woogie with the, the little clapper and everything, man, one of the greatest, listen, one of the greatest techniques right there, man, like, it's crazy to me that he was way better without his left hand than he was with it, it's just mad, but then again, it's like, he probably would have done some mad stuff there before with it, but still, the innovation that, or at least, like, the diff, the change that Gega used for him to keep him... As that, like, Gizzy was a monster. Let's be honest with ourselves, right? In certain situations, Toto is an absolute monster against most other competitions that's go up against them, right? Like, I, I would honestly think to myself that if he had that during the fight with Mahito, 
to have the little clapper and stuff. I, that fight actually finishes a lot faster, but that's just my feeling on it. But anyways, you're wrong, Maki. You aren't a viable target for my boogie woogie. Oh, because no curse energy, right? It's because of that. It's hard to say if Okotsu would have succeeded without my help. Not to mention Okotsu and Rika's power were necessary to stop the rampaging curse spirits. I mean, that is true because they had that thing. Well, there were already some dormant, but already when they out. And then you <laughs> see Phantom now. I can't take Phantom, but he's gonna kill me. <laughs> Every time you just be showing them in the battles, bro. Like, come on. Plus, Tugi's curse speech only worked because that timing made the reaction survivable. If we used it when Sukuna was feeling fine and dandy, Tolge would have been killed by the feedback. And then Salmon Bro is like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yo, I was not getting smoked like that. Come on. Sukuna was just playing around. He was capable of killing me whenever he wanted. And if someone that... Wait, 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 Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, he's lying. <laughs> no. Nah, bro, give me my fourth belt, dog. My boy. Yo, let's go, man. Let's go, man. I don't give a damn, yo. R.I.P. Sakuna Ball. Hold that firmly, you freak. Let's go. My lawyer, bro. Listen, bro. I'm taking you with me to Ace Attorney when all this is said and done, man. Oh, my God. Thank God, bro. I let to say R.I.P. to my dog. But he put in the work. Had the executioner sword. Moving like Excalibur, man. I thought it was Jover. I believed in my heart of heart, same way I fell in the bar. But nah, man. Nah, man. We're tougher than death. We are tougher than death, baby. <laughs> oh, thank God, bro. Listen, happy endings do exist. Cursed speech is easy to counter. I read the part from before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, I'm thinking, like, looking at what you're usually looking at him, right? And I'm like, that sure as hell is not Kusukabe. Because again, when you're looking from far away view and stuff, it kind of does a little. But when, you, when I saw that, that panel. <laughs> And I see the look of my bro, there's no chance, man. But thank God he survived. Curse speech is easy to counter. I'm the one to decide it's best to use it inside a closest domain with no one else around to interfere. With no violence allowed inside my domain, that would have been impossible. Still, it's pretty scary how a guy that's only been a source for two months is alive and kicking after all of that. I mean, listen, we know how scary the growth rate Higuruma had. From when the culling game started to right now. Like, he, you know, monster potential, man. It wasn't intentional. And then you see them look, like, usually look like who wants to really say something here. Look at my guy, he just like, damn. Regardless. And then you see Miguel afterwards, and then, um, oh my god. Lovray, Lovray, I believe the pronunciation is. It's been so long since we've seen them and stuff. If the backup from a board hadn't been there from the start, Things might have been different, y'all. I love a poor Miguel. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> Yo, they're gonna blame my boy from Africa, bro. I can't believe this. They're like, that's true. They can hold the face. They can even make Rupas in the gang. Yo, and by extension, it's gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna miss the series, man. Look at him, bro. Miguel just like just chilling, whatever. Just sees at the airport, or whatever. They told me that they weren't coming. I told you it was a long shot. And yet they came. Easy deal. Maki wants to whip his ass, bro. I love it, man. That, oh, bro. That, that poor kid in the future is going to be watching his dad or his or her dad get absolutely beaten to death all the time by Maki. But, you know, Cole Snoo Snoo. Of course, the Senpai's curse tools let me hide my fingers, you know. Okay. So you could have done that with gloves. Go to Home Depot. <laughs> It's so stupid. A ghost by him to Sakuna once he opened his domain a second time, you know. Like I've been saying, we could have ended it all before that even happened. Yeah, I mean, there was other scenarios, but were they, were they, were they givens? Uh, I won't even think of it now. Dot, dot, dot. I thought being on standby at Sairika was pretty helpful. We didn't skip a beat to jump in Sakuna after Gojo Sun's defeat. So we got Doryumi away from the get-go. That was all Kotsu. What you gotta think, too, because Doryumi would have been a big problem. 
of interference and all that. And then, what in the hell is this here? Is that Rika? Rika got like some kind of thing covering them or whatever. Like, oh, is that like a broadcast? Yeah, yeah can I see the Persona Four, uh, the TVs and stuff that are there because they were watching from the fights before. But I'm guessing that's their the entrance way or something. I don't even know. I don't even know. There's a lot I'm responsible for to working with with Miss May uh, have prepared us for Supreme's domain, and yet. I couldn't save Choso nor my brother. Weren't they just out of range? It was more of an issue of Sakura's immense cursed energy. It was too thick in the eye of his domain. I wasn't able to distinguish their cursed energy. Uh, I was in the eye. I was in the eye too. But Uwe was able to whisk me out, and I'm also to blame. It should have been Choso, not me. And I would have died if that happened. That's no one's fault. So yeah, they're just basically trying to like explain like how. They couldn't be able to get everybody out of that situation, but they kind of knew that beforehand when they said, I think it was about the four or like the amount that was there, that would be one that would always end up being the one left behind. And Choso, unfortunately, was the one that got left behind, but left on a phenomenal note, though. The sacrifice they had for Yuji, that is what a true big brother is supposed to do. And it's a dynamic I've always loved a lot when it comes to my storytelling that when the older brother is the one that steps up and makes that ultimate sacrifice, it, Go to characters forever. I'm not trying to blame Yuta either. I mean, I got hit with two black flashes. But he... Never mind. Wait, what? And then he said confused. Oh, she, she go like taps him out there confused. And you see like, Inamaki and Panda just laughing off and stuff. But he... Yeah, and I... I was gonna hope you finish that sentence, but... I guess not. And you see me while they're afterwards. I, I pray for her happiness, man. After everything, I was in cold sweats, acting as Maki Sun's marker, and an anti domain strategy heck, even as a reserve, I was so worried it would only save me. I told you not to get involved in the fight, I didn't do anything. You would have just subjected anyway if I told you. Let me see, uh, oh my god. Yo, this is so bad. <laughs> this is so Momo. I'm about to say, yo, this is how you know, like, this chapter is messing with me, but also the fact that waiting so long on these chapters, man, you start to, like, lose your sanity. I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to do anything. What do you mean? Your broom was most comfortable. I wanted to help against Sukuna after taking care of Uruyume, but they were crazy strong. I know that, you know, the, the annoying part I know that's going to come with this chapter, with the discourse from the community, and okay, granted, I do not pay attention anymore to what's going on on Twitter and stuff when it comes to people talking about JJK anymore, is that people are going to look at this chapter as this is Gege having a self-insert of saying, I could have done this and that and this and that, but I decided to go with the way I wanted to go with things, and they're going to use this chapter to break it down and just, like, for whatever reason, find ways to slander it. But honestly, like, I, I'm that they can have their fun over there. Uh, that doesn't matter to me. They're just literally talking on scenarios I could have been, would have been, but listen, th it's like Doctor Strange. We saw a million different outcomes, and this is the one we got with, so. And I was asleep until the very end. So, I mean, if you think of also, too, at the same time, right now is what? End of December when she came back? So, two months being out of commission. I know, like, in terms of story, it's like you've been gone since, like, like you know, 125 and all that. But it makes sense in the sense of because of the damage that was sustained from Mahito, you have to sell those effects. It's like wrestling. You have to sell an injury to the point until you're back afterwards. And, again, I don't know if she's ever going to get the eye back, but honestly, that's my Kaizo Kuz, so. And then freaking ooey ooey, man. Freaking ooey ooey. Well, everyone, it seems you've all have your regrets. But I don't suppose anyone could deny that I was the MVP. Yeah, you're, you're going... Listen, after we take care of Mei Mei, you're here next, buddy. You left me behind mid-fight. <laughs> Get out of just like, well, you're heavy. And Get out of me like, trying to go for like the switch of music. <laughs> While you were uh, busting your hump, your big sis was kicking back, relaxing. My beloved elder sister worked hard herself to the bone with the new shadow issue. Well, now that's a convenient excuse. <laughs> you see the car just like a friend to hold her back. I won't deny a thing. My life is priceless. Oh, Jesus Christ. Bring out the feet too, bro. Like, this is madness, bro. Gege is, yo, this is an evil way to go out with your series. By dropping feet pics of this criminal, man. That is insane. I won't deny a thing. My life is priceless. After all, there's no use betting with the priceless. 
By new shadow, you mean dealing with the binding vow that forbade simple domain from being taught to outsiders. Precisely. The inherited binding vow of, school, of the school of simple domain. The original creator, Ashia Sarasuna, created that binding vow with the intention of simple domain being inaccessible to cursed users. Now, before we scroll down any further, because this, this name right here, the original user, could that have been the person that Mei Mei went to go see at the very beginning of the chapter with the crazy Abra eye and all that? Because if it's someone like from even further back, it'll be pretty wild. But I, I still, it's still crazy to me that we never know exactly what the the danger of breaking a binding vow actually is in the story. Like since like we've been told since the very beginning that they do not want to enter that realm of possibly doing such a thing. And we're gone to the end. We don't know what that is, right? Unless something's about to happen, I don't know. Well, as the generations rolled on by, the new shadow style was no longer of public interest, and the simple domain technique became a trade secret. <laughs> Just see, yo, I don't listen. Vara, usually, I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm letting them cook. I'm letting them cook, okay? They essentially monopolize the technique, invite disciples, then have them undergo unnecessary binding vows. And you see there's a look right there on me was just like, I don't like where this could be going. New Shadow is a cornerstone from Sorcerers Without Techniques after all. Toto, who learned it from Sukumo, who learned it like Mekumaru did. Okay? So we see that, that from there. So, what's so tricky about this binding vow that's stopping it from being taught to, other, to outsiders? Well, there's only one part of it. We also can't refuse the head of the school if they ask us to mobilize. And then there's especially troublesome bit, their lifespan. Their lifespans. It's closer to a curse than a technique or a binding vow. It's high uncomfortable. But apparently the head of the school absorbs the user's lifespans. Apparently. No one knows who the head of the school is. Which is why there's no way to tell if the lifespan contract exists or how it functions. After all, there are grandpas and hags that live long lives, even after using it. When the head dies, the school's best disciple succeeds them. However, only they are made aware of it. Which means we have no way of sussing that out. Is this man really about to drop a whole new, like... Like, I want to see even art, but just a, one last little storyline to wrap everything up here. It feels very strange. I'm not going to get my hopes up on a part two coming off the strength of this, but, like, I, I, I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to keep reading. Only the head of the school can render the binding vows null. As far as I know, there's no one among the best students of the school that knows anything about the head. You mean there wasn't anyone? My bar looks a little confused. I am very, very interested where the hell gig is going with this. I'm the head of the new Shadow School now. Okay. You see what I mean? With like, what? Simple domains, binding foul, and all that lifespan stuff isn't an issue anymore. Be sure to leave some of the benefits. Yo, what? I, I'm so, yo, <laughs> I hate that game, bro. What in the hell are we doing? When you become the head someday, you, you can collect a nice fat monthly tuition fee from all of your disciples. All right, bro. <laughs> huh? Oh, and big sis, you really are a, 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 a misery, a misery, misery. Hey, it's time for Juicer Society to follow suit and enter the era of subscriptions. You're usually just like me, bro. Like, yo, this is the poor guy, bro. Like, just wrap it up. A price you ask for your life. Is this the person, bro? What, bro? I Man, I'm about to say, there's no way you start the chapter with this and then we don't get to see what the hell's happening. Bro, where are we going with this, Gege? Where are we going? How do you know I was here? That I'm the head. Oh, wait, 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 So the, so, 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 because I'm just noticing right now, because the blinders and all that, whatever. So, them fellas, right? Them fellas that we know that 
Gojo, Kotsu, and them, they had to go do the business, whatever, and, you know, they excommunicated, just took them out and stuff, whatever. That's the head honcho of them, of them folks, right? And obviously, of course, you say the head of the school and all that. But uh, the JJK, like, um, the Jiu-Jitsu headquarters, all that kind of stuff, that person's also connected with that, too, or it's just, just mainly with the head of the school and stuff. I just is curious, though, how the hell did Mei Mei even know that they were there in the first place? <laughs> I just asked someone with the proper information. Gathering disciples until your power rival that of one of the big three families. No one should have such information. You wanted to take over the Jusu world, including ousting those higher ups, didn't you? And you see all the crows starting to gather because they know a body's about to come. Tangan! What the hell is going on? What in the hell is going on? Why are these crows... Nah, bro. Gig, I swear to God, bro. If you're about to do some madness right now with this ending, bro. You would have needed years and years draining your disciples' lifespans. There was something you wanted to see, wasn't there? Aspirations like these seem almost priceless. And now, with the Zenin clan annihilated, we stand on the cusp of a decisive battle. Wherein both the Kamo and Gozo clans could face destruction. But you know things even more important than money. Can't be protected without the proper funds. There were sorcerers whose lives would have been saved if you hadn't monopolized the simple domain. More than anything, you were trying to turn my dear little brother into damaged goods. That alone made this an inevitability. And they got snuffed. Because you see the blood. Oh my god. You pay the price with your life. Only two chapters remain. So, they basically, a background source, essentially, that could have prevented all this from really. Basically, May May wins in the background. And found out that there was more of an issue, or yeah, basically knew there was something else going on in the background. Which, guys, I know for for us, it's like you know, how did we know that things were going on like this in the background? But I guess that's the way it just ties everything together. That there was more going on that we weren't seeing on the surface level, and they went to go and take care. And granted, the driving force of that is the fact that they were about to do something that would have caused some trouble there for Ui Ui, and May May do not play around. With that kid. So yeah. They got absolutely eviscerated. That's crazy man. For her. Yo. I really want to know how she got that information. Like the person exactly. I'm, maybe Gojo. Maybe makes the most sense probably. Or Yaga. You know what I mean. Like those are probably the ones that probably connect to make the most sense. Because it's like he was the principal. It wasn't the head. Right. Because that was now been established in this chapter. That like. While he was the one just watching things, how they were going, whatever, he wasn't the one, like, the super body intended or whatever it was and stuff, right? But, wow, man. I was, I was very frightened for a moment that we're about to do something here where this is going to open the world for a part two, possibly. But, nah, that just got snuffed immediately. And, yeah. I mean, listen, there is a lot to dissect on that chapter about where things are going uh, that led to what happened right here. But now that it's been taken care of, now that the head's basically gone, someone else is going to be able to take it over, which we now have to believe it's Kusakabe based on what he just said right there. But, yeah, that is very, very, very interesting how Giga decided to go with this. And again, I'm going to have to like reread this chapter to really kind of get my thoughts firmly in place with what we just seen right now. Because it felt like a lot in such a small amount of time. But, yeah. So, I mean, this is more so them going over the fact that they could have gone through different ways and things about it. And, you know, they could have saved themselves a situation further in time. But then also the other obstacles that would have came with it. And they weren't, again, Sukuna and Kenjaku might have also had thought ahead of time that maybe some of these things could be stopped or whatever. In terms of, like, different ways to take them out the game. But, yeah, man, I don't, that, this was a strange way of going about it. But, like, I like the the ambiance of it and everything, where it's like, you didn't know where exactly it was going, and it started to get darker and darker, and then by the time you get to the very end of it afterwards, a problem that was actually going on 
in a different place and like while everything was going on i just been taking care of just like that so yeah that that man Fair enough, Mei Mei. I mean, listen, I've been wanting her to do, like, more stuff in the story. So, her, her having this moment right here, I definitely think it's going to be something I'll definitely remember from this series for sure. But, you know, it doesn't stop the allegations, unfortunately. But, yeah, now we know why he went to the candy shop and all that. But, yeah. What an end to the chapter. Now we have the penultimate and then the final chapter after. So, yeah. Guys, I am very curious to know what we think down in the comments below regarding this chapter. Because I know this will definitely end up... Causing, I want to say a storm completely and everything. But, you know, people are going to definitely be asking, you know, what was the whole process and reason why Gege wanted to go about this. But I'm very curious to know what everybody thinks down in the comments below in regards to what Gege did here. It, for me, it was pretty ideal, I guess, what was going on. was that we went through different scenarios. We realized something else was going on in the background. Maybe found out what the situation was, handled things with the head of the school. And now there shouldn't be no issues whatsoever. But the stuff with the Binding Vows, I think it's a little bit confusing here and there. But, again, a few more rereads might be a little bit better after. It's hard to try and get, like, the decisive answers the first time you read something, especially when it's, like, very early in the morning by the time I'm recording this. But that's what happens when you're reading uh, JJK from Akutama Gege. But, again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. This is a pretty good chapter, I would say, for the majority part of it, especially towards the end, knowing, the, the, like, where things were going before Meimei went and snuffed the head of the school. So that was, like, a really cool little thing there. But again, thoughts down in the comments below. Any clarifications, any input, anything you want to add about the chop three, if it was important that you want to talk about, that I didn't discuss too much on it, but you want to discuss it, let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new here. If you want to be part of the final weeks to come when it comes to my coverage of Jujutsu Kaisen week in, week out, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on what's going on in these final two weeks. And be sure to click on the bell, shut and door to stay up to date with everything that goes on the channel. With that being said, I will hopefully catch you guys next week. Hopefully earlier in the week, this time around, when it comes to the chapter. But if it does come out late like this again, expect the reaction review to be out on the Sunday. And hopefully we'll be with the TCB. If not, well, we're going to have to wait for the viz. But hopefully it won't be the case. And we can enjoy these final two chapters of the series the way we're intended to. And just cherish the time we have left. Because Gege, as much pain as you've given me and the audience for week in and week in, Month in and month in, year in and year out. I truly enjoy this journey, and I'm looking forward to see how it ends. Because this will always be, like right now, it still will be one of my favorite series ever come out of Weekly Shonen Jump. And I just need the ending to land. That's all I need. And then I have a favorite cemented forever. But I'll see you guys next week. And Gege, I'm looking forward to more Eat My Man. Commodore last signing off. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, take care.